There are no rivers on the moon, nor has there ever been. The moon does, however, have rills. These are rivers of lava that cut into the surface or are collapsed lava tubes. We don't know for sure yet. What is strange rills on the moon? Since man first touched the moon and brought pieces of it back to Earth, scientists have thought that the lunar surface was bone dry. But new observations from three different spacecrafts have put this notion to rest with what has been called unambiguous evidence of water across the surface of the moon. The new findings detailed in the journal Science come in the wake of further evidence of lunar polar water ice by NASA's Lunar Renaissance Orbiter. And just weeks before the planned lunar impact of NASA's L-Cross satellite, which will hit one of the permanently shadowed craters at the moon's south pole in hope of churning up evidence of water in ice deposits in the debris field. The moon remains drier than any desert on Earth, but the water is said to exist on the moon in very small quantities. One ton of the top layer of the lunar surface would hold about 32 ounces of water, researchers said. If the water molecules are as mobile as we think they are, even a fraction of them, they provide a mechanism for getting water to those permanently shadowed craters. This opens a whole new avenue of lunar research. Finding water on the moon would be a boon to possible future lunar bases, acting as a potential source of drinking water and fuel. Apollo turns up dry. When Apollo astronauts returned from the moon 40 years ago, they brought back several samples of lunar rocks. The moon rocks were analyzed for signs of water bound to minerals present in the rocks while trace amounts of water were detected. These were assumed to be contamination from Earth. Because the containers the rocks came back in had leaked, the isotopes of oxygen that exist in the moon are the same as those that exist on Earth. So it was difficult, if not impossible, to tell the difference between water from the moon and water from Earth. While scientists continued to suspect that water ice deposits could be found in the coldest spots of South Pole craters that never saw sunlight. The consensus became that the rest of the moon was bone dry. But new observations of the lunar surface made with Kendrayan 1, NASA's Cassini spacecraft and NASA's Deep Impact probe are calling that consensus into question with multiple detections of the spectral signal of either water or the hydroxyl group. Three spacecraft, Kendrayan 1, India's first ever moon probe, was aimed at mapping the lunar surface and determining its mineral composition. While the probe was still active, its NASA-built mineralogy mapper detected wavelengths of light reflected off the surface that indicated the chemical bond between hydrogen and oxygen, the telltale sign of either water or hydroxyl. Because M3 can only penetrate the top few millimeters of lunar regolith, the newly observed water seems to be at or near the lunar surface. M3's observation also showed that the water signal got stronger toward the polar regions. Kanzani, which passed by the moon in 1999 on its way to Saturn, provides confirmation of this signal with its own slightly stronger detection of the water signal. The water would have to be absorbed or trapped in the glass and minerals at the lunar surface. The Kinsini data shows a global distribution of the water signal, though it also appears stronger near the poles. Finally, the Deep Impact spacecraft, as part of its extended Xboxy mission and at the request of the M3 team, made infrared detections of water and hydroxyl as part of a collaboration exercise during several close approaches of the Earth-Moon system and route to its planned flyby. 
of Comet 103P, Hartley 2, in November 2010. Deep Impact detected the signal at all latitudes above 10 degrees N. Though, once again, the poles show the strongest signals. With its multiple passes, Deep Impact was able to observe the same region at different times of the lunar day. At noon, when the sun's rays were stronger, the water feature was lowest, while in the morning, the feature was stronger. The authors in their study said, the Deep Impact observations of the moon not only unequivocally confirmed the presence of water hydroxyl on the lunar surface, but also reveal that the entire lunar surface is hydrated during at least some portions of the lunar day. The findings of all three spacecraft provide unambiguous evidence for the presence of hydroxyl or water, said Paul Lucy of the University of Hawaii in an opinion essay accompanying the three studies. Where the water comes from, combined. The findings show that not only is the moon hydrated, the process that makes it so is a dynamic one that is driven by the daily changes in solar radiation, hitting any given spot on the surface. The sun might also have something to do with how the water got there. There are potentially two types of water on the moon that brought from outside sources such as water-bearing comets striking the surface or that originates on the moon. The second edogenic source is thought to possibly come from the interaction of the solar wind with moon rocks and soils. The rocks and regolith that make up the lunar surface are about 45% oxygen. If the charged hydrogens, which are traveling at one-third the speed of light, hit the lunar surface with enough force, they break apart oxygen bonds in soil materials where free oxygen and hydrogen exist. There is a chance that trace amounts of water will form. The various study researchers also suggest that the daily dehydration and rehydration of the trace water across the surface could lead to the migration of hydroxyl and hydrogen towards the poles where it can accumulate in the cold traps of the permanently shadowed regions. Apollo 15 landed next to Rills, but they were never allowed to descend into it for safety reasons. Despite nearly every geologist and planetary scientist in the world warning them to do so, even if there was a river on the moon, it might have vaporized. As there is no atmosphere, there would be no required pressure to keep water in the liquid phase. I have an example for you. Consider you take an open glass of water on the moon. What do you think will happen? Half of it will get vaporized quickly and half would freeze as vaporized water takes away heat. NASA reports that traces of water vapor are released from the moon's surface during meteor strikes. Water is released from the hydrated layer, which is covered by dry upper soil. About two-thirds of this vapor escapes into space, but that rest lands on the surface. However, that isn't true weather caused by rain. The moon has a very thin atmosphere, so it cannot trap heat or insulate the surface. There is no wind there, no clouds, no rain, no snow, and no storms. But there is a day and night, and there are extreme differences in temperatures depending on where the sun is shining. Scientists think there is a great deal of water on the moon in the form of water ice in small pieces mixed within the lunar soil where it is shielded from solar radiation. In 2009, NASA crashed an upper stage rocket body into the surface of the moon in order to eject a plum of material upwards where it flew the L-cross probe through the plum in order to study its composition. NASA determined that about 5% of the material was water ice. Further scans by NASA's LRO probe indicate 
that as much as 22% of Shackleton Crater at the moon's south pole is covered in ice. Since the moon has very little inclination, deep parts of this crater are in perpetual darkness where sunlight cannot reach the ice. There are no actual seas and rivers on the moon. The moon has wide flat areas that appear to be seas to early astronomers. These are in fact plains of solidified lava that cooled to form flat, relatively smooth areas on the surface. It is believed that they were formed by the heat of meteors' impacts. Although the early astronomers were mistaken, the names they gave to those areas have been kept. Science has a tradition of keeping names for things even after the names may be shown to be inaccurate as a homage to the people who first discovered and classified them. But the moon doesn't have much water because its core is cold and solid. When a planet or moon has a molten core, it causes the planet or moon to have a magnetosphere. This provides a magnetic shield around it that protects the surface from much of the solar wind and radiation from the sun. Without this protection from a magnetosphere, the solar wind will drive off most of the gaseous atmosphere, including the water vapor. Thus, much less water. Many people believe the same thing happened to Mars. How do you like our flight to the moon? Subscribe to our channel if you like this video and join our community of lovers of science, space, and the unknown using the links in the description to keep a breeze of events. Hugs.